Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of transmissions, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the forest everybody, which is populated by four of the most adorable little robots you have ever seen. Although I do have to say, you can't quite see them in my playthrough because, well, the prototype I've got, uh, these were printed on a 3D printer with a very, very dark gray plastic. Much darker than what the real game will have. And because of the way my lights are set up, so they shine straight down so I don't cast shadows with my hands very much, um, when they're sitting here on the table, all the light is going straight down and just makes them look like little miniature Darth Vaders. But to give you an idea of what they really look like, here's a screenshot I snapped while Jen and I were playing the other day. And you can see they really pop. These are just adorable! Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I mean, let me get a little bit closer and you can see a bit more of the detail. I mean, he's got a little toe, or a little play truck that he's pulling around on a string. Although, again, remember, these are a th you know 3D prototype prints, so they're a little bit rough around the edges, but it should give you an idea of just how adorable the screen presence of this game, or the, the, the table presence, is just absolutely wonderful. But they do look a little bit dark because of my lighting. So, anyway, one more quick look at them in all their adorable nature, and now let's start playing. So, how does it work? Well, as part of setup, each player gets their own board, uh, for which represents each of the four robots, which uh, are the slowpoke, the really quick one with the wings, and then the two in the middle. We start with one of each of the four colors of engrams, which are a resource we can use to buy stuff. And we get a couple of randomly selected starter upgrade tiles, and we can put them wherever we want. I've applied both of them to this robot, this one over here. So whenever I activate him, in addition to whatever he would normally do, if he's gathering resources, he gathers more resources. Or she gathers more resources. Or it gathers more resources. I am not quite certain. Um, you know, what's up with these robots? So, this is my favorite robot. I'd like to move this one whenever possible and land them over here in the water area or the meadow because this is where we collect engrams and uh, this robot collects more engrams for me. So, i uh, probably keep an eye on them. Jen, she had the same situation. She has the four engrams. We also start with four electricity. Robots love electricity, of course. And Jen decided to split her two things out a little bit. Uh, this one says she can spend electricity to get an extra engram, yellow or white, whenever she wants. And if she activates this robot instead of this one, she can convert blue into green, which might come in handy. So, Jen uh, likes more of the robots than me. But anyway, that's the setup. We're ready to go. And how does it work? Oh, last thing I should say is there are a bunch, there's a whole deck of items and um, ideas that these robots can collect. And only a portion of them will come up. You can see, here's all the other ideas and item tiles and pipe tiles that I will not be using in this game. So there's a lot of variety of different stuff you get every time you play as well. So anyway... I've got my starting deck of cards. One, two, three is my hand size. And on my turn, I'm going to play one of these three cards. If I play this card, I can activate this robot, who is not my favorite. If I play this card, I can activate the Slowpoke robot. And if I play this card, I can activate any robot if they're on one of these three types of terrain. And currently, the Slowpoke is on that type of terrain. So I can play this card to activate the Slowpoke. And hey, this one, my uh, or no, not my favorite. My favorite is over here. And, oh yeah, so, my favorite one who gets to generate more stuff if I activate him because you can see he's on one of these little manhole covers, I could make him go. So, let's start out. Let's play from my hand this card. Alrighty, and that means I can activate a robot in this region, this region, or this region. Each region has two spaces. I'm going to activate my favorite robot. Now, when you play a card, it goes back to the bottom of the deck. So it'll come up again a little bit later. We're just constantly cycling through this deck clockwise uh, from space to space to space to space to space to space all the way around the board. Although there are powers that let you move counterclockwise around this rondelle. So I can move up to three. I'm going to go one, two. And because it stopped here, I get to activate the river, which means I can get a blue watery engram or two white engrams. But remember, I've got the extra thing that whenever I get anything, I, on top of that, get an additional white and a yellow. So I'll go on ahead and get one blue. And because I activated my favorite robot, I also get a yellow and I get a white. And just like that, I am completely full because the maximum number of engrams we can hold on our board is seven. If I had more, I'd have to discard 
down to seven. So I've got a little bit of everything that puts me in a good position to start buying items or ideas or laying pipe. Okay, so that was it. And then I draw another card and my turn is over. It is Jen's turn. Let's give her deck one last little quick shuffle. Uno, dos, tres. Okay. And what is she going to do? Okay, so she can uh, move the winged one who can move up to four spaces or she can move one in the meadow or in the water area. So she could move this one with this card or she could, well, there's nobody on these spaces. So that's out, uh, but there's this one. So she could use this card or this card to move the winged four spacer. Although Jen doesn't get any benefits from moving that one. So she's going to play one of these cards, move one robot up to its maximum distance, and then do whatever that robot going to do. So what's she going to do? I think she is going to play this card, which says, hey, move somebody that's in the meadow or in the lake. And so I just put one in the lake. So that's what Jen's going to do. This goes to the bottom of the deck. And Jen can move this robot, who does, which does not give her any special ability, but can move up to three spaces. She's just going to go one. There's already somebody here. Whenever they're next to each other, they just skip over it. So she could go up to one, two, three, but just going to stop right there. And Jen is going to be the first to buy an item. Now, the costs for them are shown right there on the board. You can see that uh, this one, which is the cheapest because it requires one electricity as opposed to four electricity, also needs a blue and a green. Now, we have one of each. And Jen starts with four. So she could buy any of these. So she's going to buy the cheapest one that costs her one electricity and her starting green and blue. And so what did she get? She got an adorable little coffee cup that she now adds to her robot. She can put them in any of these slots. And you can see this takes up a lot of space. Once a given robot has completely filled up all their upgrade slots, they will score points. So filling up the, the fast one, it only has three slots, is worth four points. Filling up this one is worth eight points. So Jen's going to go ahead and take the coffee cup and put it over here and start working. Now she only needs to fill up two more slots, and this will be an eight-point robot. Plus, it, this coffee cup is worth at least one point, but if she can get another coffee cup, it'll be worth two. And if you look over here, there's another coffee cup just waiting to be grabbed. So Jen's hoping she could grab this. She puts both of these. Then this Slowpoke, uh, who can convert blues into greens, also is worth eight points plus 9, 10, 11, 12. This is a 12-point robot if Jen can get both those coffee cups. All right, so that she's got a bit of a long-term goal. She needs to get another robot landing in these spaces so that she could buy that while the buying is good. Although, she's going to need another blue and a green engram, and right now, she's out of engrams. So that was Jen's turn. Now, whenever you buy an item or an idea, the opposite thing goes away. So Je because Jen bought this, this goes away. This was an opportunity to convert yellows into blues. It costs two energy to buy, but it's out of the game. And now all the other ones slide over, becoming a little bit cheaper, and then new things come out. A little shoe, which is worth two for one, but if you get two shoes, each shoe is worth six. So these could be 12 points worth of shoes if you can get a second one. And then, ooh, this makes the any whatever robot you put this on, this idea, lets them move up to two spaces further, so it gives you more flexibility. This one is nice. It lets you move counterclockwise instead of clockwise, which is a huge amount of flexibility too. Okay, so uh, that was that for Jen, and so she moved a robot, she landed, she bought some stuff, and now she uh, gets another one in her hand, and it's my turn again. And, oh, this is nice. No, it's not, though. I would like to move, well, okay. No, I said I can't really use this because I'm full. I need to buy some stuff because I'm completely overloaded. So, let's see. Let's go on ahead and play this card which says, hey, I can move anybody in the electricity area or in the forest area. So I'm going to say this is moving the, the, the fast robot that's in the forest area. This goes back to the bottom of the deck. And this fast one can go up to four steps. Let's have them go one, two, three, and stop here in the pipe area. I've got all these engrams. I want to spend them. So let's do that. Now, uh, if you take a looky-loo, you can see these all have different costs, and they're worth uh, you know different amounts of points. The more expensive, the more points they're worth. Let's see, let's uh, arrange them a little bit more. And I've got tons of engrams, so I could buy any of these. Uh, let's see, although I do not have three yellows. I've only got two yellows on hand. 
So that won't do. So you can see I've got two yellows and one green, two blues, and two whites. So let's go on ahead and buy, let's just buy this double blue. Okay. So I've, uh, I'm going to buy this. It costs two blue and a green. Alrighty, boom. And remember, I had this starting pipe. I am now going to extend the starting pipe. Now, I could just take this, keep it face down, and it's worth four points at the end of the game. But this is worth, um, what is it, six points. Or, no, I'm sorry. Is this worth nine points? No, this is worth six points. Oh, I misread that. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, I don't want a six pointer. I don't want to spend two blues and a green for a six pointer. Let's go on ahead. And let's get this eight pointer for a blue. A yellow and a white. Let's go for that one. Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, um, now the reason this one costs more is because it had more ways that it could hook into my existing network of pipes. It had three options. This one only has two, so it's a little bit uh, more limiting. And in fact, you'll see, hey, I can't. Th this Audi can't stick at all. Um, you know, so sometimes you might take a pipe and you can't install it into your network of pipes, in which case you only get four points. But I can go on ahead and put this like this. And so that is an eight point tile. And now I've only got one fat and I've got three uh, skinny connectors for, uh, you know, grabbing. Like if I grab this one later on, I could go like this and continue to extend my pipe. Now, the, the pipe tiles are worth whatever they say, plus you get additional points for your longest contiguous stretch of pipe. So you want to be really clever about how you extend these, and you don't want to put yourself uh, in a bind where you can't extend anymore, because you know some of these um, are even dead ends where they literally can't extend. But anyway, so that was, I moved him over here, I grabbed some pipe, I started scoring points that way, and that was my turn. I draw another card. Okay, it is now Jen's turn, and let's see here. So she is really out of engrams. She needs to grab some more. So she will have, she'll play this card, which is this one right here, and that one can move up to three. She'll just have to move one, and Jen can get two yellow or one green in the meadow. All righty, so she will get herself two yellow. So now she's got enough yellow to get this pipe if she wants, which is one that um, you know does you know it's worth seven points and it just extends an existing line further. So that'd be nice. But she's got to get a robot all the way around over to these spaces. So anyway, so Jen came there. She played the card. She just got a couple. That was really quick and easy, and she's done. My turn. All righty. So I remember, and when I when I, whenever I activate this one which I think is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to play this. I'm going to move one space. I could move up to three, but I'm going to move one so that while they're still in the meadow, I can get another green or two more yellow. And because it's this one, I'll get another yellow and a white. Right, so here's the yellow and the white bonus I get. And I'll go on ahead and take a green. So I've just got more variety. There we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And once again, I'm full up. And so this is important. When Jen, Jen put this in position, if Jen had decided to move over here, then I wouldn't have had the opportunity. All I could do is make him move further on, and I wouldn't have been able to pick up. So that is an important thing. Uh, every one of the different regions where you can get these engrams or these engrams or cards or pipes or ideas or items or electricity, there's two spaces. Um, if you move them into the first space, that means you're giving yourself in the future or another player a chance to do it again. If you move them to the end, that means you're that much closer onto the next area. So anyway, so I moved that one, one. I refilled up using my special power. That's it. And Jen is kind of kicking herself. She should have moved it over here, so I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of that. All right, so it is Jen's turn. She can move the slow poke. Oh, that's interesting. So the Slowpoke, who can only move two, could go one, two, one to buy more stuff, but Jen doesn't have the engram she needs. She's got all the yellows for that pipe over there. She could, and you'll notice how because I landed here, no one, no one could use this to be able to get more pipe. So it's this is the first one that's going to be able to grab pipe, and Jen can't move that one right now. And that one's going to have to go one, two, three, four, five. So that's the first time you'll be able to buy more pipe is when this one moves five spaces. So Jen's going to have to put her pipe dreams on hold for a bit, I think. But she can gather more stuff. And I think she might like to do that. 
Let's see here. She will have the Slowpoke, who can only move up to two spaces by default. Move one, two. And so now Jen's in the meadow, and she can get green or yellow. She will go on ahead and get... She doesn't want more yellow. She's planning on spending all that yellow over here. And you need yellow or white over here to get ideas, which is what she's wanting to do. So she can program more ideas into her robots so they can do more powers. Um, right. So I think she will go on ahead. She'll go on ahead and get the green. Because remember, she wants this other coffee cup, which needs a green and a blue. So that's kind of important. Although, that's the thing. This robot can convert blues into greens, but she doesn't need that right now. So anyway, so that's what she did. She played her card. She draws a new one. All right, my turn. And what am I going to do? All right, I am full up. I need to spend these engrams. So I can move the slow poke. I could move this one. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's go on. Or let's see. Or I could move either of these because they're in the meadow. And if I move this one, I could use the powers again, but I'm already full. So it doesn't make sense to do that. But I'd be happy if this one stays in the meadow a little bit so I can move them later after I spend a bunch of stuff. So, you know what? Actually, I wouldn't mind getting an idea, another idea. So I'm going to have the Slowpoke move. And again, that goes to the bottom of the deck. And the Slowpoke can move up to two spaces. You skip spaces that are already occupied, so it's going to go one. Could keep on going over here to pick up a bunch more electricity, which is a resource we use for various things. But that'd be moving two. We're just going to stop right there and move one. And so now I can buy any of these ideas and program them into my robots. So, which one do I want? This is the cheap... Well, yeah, this is... These two are cheaper because it just costs the energy, the electricity. Uh, this one costs two electricity. This one costs one. This costs electricity plus an engram. And this costs electricity plus an engram. You know what? I really do like this counterclockwise option. I'm going to pay for that. That's cost one energy. And from either a yellow or a white engram, let's see. Let's go on ahead and... Well, those are the ones I get bonuses of. I'll just go ahead and pay a yellow engram. And no, I'll pay a white engram because I can see there are yellows that I could spend over here. So I'll pay a white engram plus the energy. And now I've got to program this into a robot spot. I can continue working on this one. So he's almost completely programmed, which means it's worth six more points. Or I can spread it around so I have more flexibility. Like making the super fast one, the one that can go four spaces, go four spaces clockwise or counterclockwise. That's super powerful. Let's do that. Okay. So there we go. And uh, that was my turn. I draw another card. Okay. And it is Jen's turn. So she'd still like to get over here. And this one, this is interesting now. Oh no, this, this one over here could go one, two, three. Could get her a card or get her some more electric. She hasn't really used any yet. Uh, nobody's here, but so, and no one is here. So this card literally can't be used right now. And this one could make the fast one go. Uh, that's just, Jen, Jen says, let's make the, the quick one go again, the one with the wings. And they could go up to four, but they're just going to go one, two. And Jen can get two white or a blue. She needs another blue because she's planning on getting that other coffee cup. All right, so that she can get a pair. All right, and then she draws. And it is my turn again. And we've got a bit of a traffic jam here. Okay, what would I like to do? So I can move this one, because, or I can move either of these. That's actually kind of nice. Let's go on ahead and move the uh, quick one. Oh, and remember, don't, don't forget. So if I play this one, to move the quick one, the one with wings, uh, we can move up to four spaces, I can move counterclockwise. So I could come back and get some more pipe. I could even go one, two, three, four, come all the way over here and get some force. Or I can move forward to buy an item. One thing I can't get to, both of these spaces are blocked. So I can't... Oh, by the way, I forgot. Whenever an item or an, uh, an idea are gone, the matching one goes away too. Other ones slide out, and new ones come out. That's why I watch the Klingon subtitles turned on, folks, because sometimes I forget. Okay, so there we go. So, I'm going to play this specifically to move. And, hmm. Yeah, let's go counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. I've made it all the way back to the forest. And over here, what you do is you draw two cards and keep one. You can draw from the discard pile or draw a blind. Let's draw a blind and see what we get. All right. Oh, so this is six electricity. Now, I could draw another one and then keep one and discard the other. Or I could draw this one and keep one of these two. Now, this one is basically an extra turn. Uh, you know, After I take a turn, I could play this card and do another turn. So, this could be cool for more elaborate stuff where I get a robot into position and then I play this and get the, and move them again so I can rush and get something um, while the getting is good. That's pretty cool. But what the heck, let's just go ahead and draw another one. Okay, 
This is just two points. So, um, do I want two points? Do I want six electricity? I've given up on this. But there's a, there is one thing to bear in mind. If you look closely at these cards, they've got acorns on them. And you do not want to collect acorns. Because at the end of the game, whoever has the fewest acorns on the cards they've taken gets five bonus points. So um, what we want to do is leave the acorns for the forest critters. Don't take them for ourselves. So if I take this for two points, I'm also potentially making it more difficult to win the five-point bonus for having the fewest acorns. So with that in mind, I think I will jettison the two-pointer, take this, and I'll use it immediately and just give myself... One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I got lots of electricity, and I've got to keep this at the end of the game to because we'll reveal who has taken the most acorn. So far, I've taken two. Jen hasn't taken any. Alrighty, and I've got a lot of electricity, so I don't need to bother stopping in these spots where you can get four electricity. Alright, so that was my turn. I draw another card. Boom. And it is Jen's turn again. And, oh, that's interesting. Now that this has fallen into place, Jen will play this to activate somebody in the forest, which is the speedy. And Jen will say, hey, move forward a couple. Could move up to four, move in two. And now Jen can get that pipe she was looking for. And that's exactly what I was going to do. I moved him back so I could move forward. And you'll notice Jen moved here far enough so that nobody else can use him. Nobody could move him just one space. Um, you know, because if he was here, if somebody can move one space to get it, but now he's going to move on and do other things. So Jen grabbed this. She will expand this. That is seven points, and she is making a longer line of pipe. Okay, nice. Back to me. That is a bummer. And I really need to make some big purchases before I gather more resources. And Jen just stopped me from doing what I wanted to do. But you know, I can still do it anyway, because I've got a card devoted to him. So let's go on ahead and play this. And again, I can move up to four spaces. I'll just move him counterclockwise. And boom, I'm in position. Jen couldn't stop me, thanks to my counterclockwise special idea that I've got. So which one of these am I going to buy? I would like to buy... Okay, I think this one right here. So I need a white, a green, and a yellow. Because there's a few things about this. First of all, if you look closely, you'll notice... There's a little butterfly peeking out on there. Um, there are also butterflies and birds that can be found on the ideas and the items. So this is another thing. You want to make friends with all the fauna of this because at the end of the game, you count up the number of butterflies you've collected on your various things times the number of um, uh, birds, you will score that many points. So if you have four birds and three butterflies, that's 12 more points you've got. So anyway, so I'm going to put this here. And so this is making me extend further. That's a, a, another bunch of points. And a little butterfly. Now, I need at least one bird. Although one bird times one butterfly is only one point. So, but uh, that was pretty nice. Okay, so that was that. I draw another card. And it is Jen's turn again. And that is interesting. Jen... She could um, get another pipe if she wants. And you know, and the thing is, in this game, you can't really do everything. So do you really focus on pipes? Do you focus on filling in all your robot slots and getting a lot of points that way, plus a lot of powers? Do you do set collection? Do you focus on the butterflies? Do you uh, get? Uh, do you avoid cards or do you get cards? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of different ways you could go in this game. But it's all driven by the cards. And what can Jen do right now? She can move this one up to... I think she will. I think she's going to play this one. All right, so she can move him up to three spaces. And she's a bit low on energy, so she'll just go one, two. And that will get her four more energy. But since it's this robot, she can spend one of those energy to get a white or a yellow engram. Let's see. And if she's going to be moving around here, yeah, if she gets a yellow engram, she can get another pipe and continue to extend by moving further along here. So there we go. She got a little bit of a bonus. That was that. And then back to me. Okay, now I am getting low on engrams again, so I want to activate this one. But this one, um, because it can't go counterclockwise, has to move all the way around here before I can um, get them to do the other. So it'd be really nice to give them like uh, this, this idea and install it, which says, hey, spin in electricity and move them anywhere. So... I want to get that idea and install it on my um, my super collector so they can collect easier. 
Can I do that? Yes. Here's what I'll do. I'll play this card. And it says, hey, move somebody on a manhole, somebody on the dock, or somebody on the stones. The slow poke is on the stone. So I'm using it to activate that one. Can move up to two. We're just going to have them move one. And um, where, which means they're staying here. They're going to buy an idea. I was just talking about that. I am going to spend two electricity to get this and put it here. So now this robot is one step closer to being fully programmed, which is worth points. Plus, if I use electricity, I can move this around anywhere I want so I can re um, recover stuff quicker and easier. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Jen's turn. Let's see here. So she can move that one. Oh, oh, and don't forget. So this mitten with two butterflies on it is gone. Everything else slides over. New stuff comes out. Now there's a few different ways the game can end. If um, if anybody completely fills up all of their robot slots, that triggers the end of the game. Or if we run out of these, or if one of these pipe stacks empties out, or if one of those stacks empties out, any of those can trigger the end of the game. So, um, right, Jen is up. What is she going to do? Right, she could move to get another idea. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So, or what does she want to do? Right, oh, I think she was just, why, why did she just get that engram? Oh, because, wasn't there a pipe she wanted to grab? Because, yeah, she can grab another pipe right now. So, Jen says, hey, I'm going to use the manhole of this to activate, and Jen's just going to stay over here because I allow this guy to keep moving backwards and forwards. Jen is going to buy another pipe for a yellow, a green, and a blue. And somehow she just never seems to make the time to make it back around here to get the other coffee cup. And she better hurry on that because it might disappear. This coffee cup is worth eight points by filling this space up. Plus um, one, two, uh, three. So th this is an 11 point coffee cup if Jen gets over there. And it could go, as soon, if somebody takes this idea, it's gone. So, but anyway, Jen's just messing around, mucking around with pipe. She's going to take this and she will expend her pipe network even further. So the longest contiguous bunch of pipe it will score extra points at the end of the game. So that was it for Jen. She's happy with that. And then it's back to me. And by the way, there's only three more here. If, if people just focus on these, the game could end sooner than later. Hmm. Okay. Right. And I wanted to get back. Okay. So now that I can spend an electricity to move this one wherever I want. Where are they? They are... Yes. There we go. So I'm going to spend this. Play this. And normally that meant I would move up to three spaces clockwise. But because I will spend an electricity, I can move them wherever I want. Let's go on ahead and move back over here. And boom. I can get myself a blue or two white. I'll give myself a blue. And because it's this one, I'll also get a white and a yellow. And they're in the perfect position to start coming through here and getting items and ideas. So that's nice. That is a nice little combo working out well for me right there. Okay. And it is Jen's turn. And now... Now, all of a sudden, this one's here. Jen might lose her coffee cup. But the problem is she doesn't have the blue and green anymore. She needs to get some blue and green. Um, she can get a blue and convert it into green. She can spend electricity and get a white or a yellow. Oh, no. What has Jen done? What has she done? And it's too bad because she's got the card. She can move into position to get it. But she just got that pipe instead. She got a bit greedy. So what is she going to do? Hmm. Well, I know what she's going to do. She is going to prevent me from being able to buy anything. She's going to play this and say, hey, who's in the water? That one. This one can move up to three. One, two, three. Skipped right over it. No one's going to buy this coffee cup but her. So she's prevented me from getting it because she can see. I mean, I can see she wants that coffee cup because that's worth quite a bit to her. But anyway, so Jen just pushed it past there. And so now Jen can get a green or two yellows. And she's going to go on ahead and get the green because then she can hopefully make this one get the blue and then come into position and buy what she wants. Okay. Boom. And I'm like, Ugh! all right, well, fine, I say. Let's see. I can move Slowpoke over there. I could get another card. That's not bad. I could, or I, or I could move um, the sitting one. And now I can move three. I could get another pipe. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just get some more pipe. All right, so this one doesn't have any special powers for me. Moving up to three spaces. One, two, three. And let's lay some more pipe. Okay. So I've got uh, two greens, a blue, two yellows. Hmm. All right, that one's that one's okay. Yeah, that'll do. This is an eight pointer. There goes the two yellows and the blue. And so you can see it's got a divot and a sticky outie. The sticky outie I can't use anywhere, but the divot can. 
and then boom, I've got an even longer string of pipes. There we go. Hoorah. All right. So that was that. Easy peasy. And now Jen says, hey, uh, Quickie McGee, move uh, one, two, and come over there just to get the blue. So now Jen's got the blue and the uh, green she needs. And hopefully she will draw a card that lets her move again. She did not. She was hoping to draw the water tile so she can move again immediately. But anyway, so that's that. But Jen's in the position to get her coffee cup and fill this up. So that'll be nice. And in the meantime, though, where am I going to go? All right, so I need to do another big super collection. I need a super surge. So I would like to move you one, which I can do. I've got the meadow here. You're in the meadow. I say move one, which gives me a green or two yellows. And I will go on ahead and take the green. So now I've got three green, which makes it easier to get this pipe. And because uh, this is bonus one, I get a white and a yellow. So I'm filling back up again. There we go. And Jen's turn. So she can't quite get the coffee cup with the sweet little birdie. So Slowpoke could move. Get her. So she's got plenty of electricity. So I don't think she wants to play that. No one's on these space or either of these spaces, so she can't because all those spaces are empty. So it's going to be this card, um, the meadow. All right, which is good actually, because you know if I move over here and then buy this, Jen's coffee cup will disappear. So Jen will move there. Could move one. Could keep on moving. Does Jen want to get an idea? Yeah, I think so. I think Jen will move here, spend one electricity to get uh, this. And whichever robot she applies this to can move two extra steps. So the Slowpoke, who can only move two, now the Slowpoke can move four and makes that a much more powerful robot for her. And then she just needs one more upgrade and completely played out. Let's do that. So now every robot can be moved three or four spaces for Jen clockwise. Okay, so anyway, that means this shoe is g -g gone. Everything slips and slides on over. New one comes out. And it is my turn. And right. I. Hmm. Now, here's the problem. There's a toothbrush, which is worth two or potentially four. Toothbrush, br uh, the toothbrush with the bird is already out of the game. So that makes this a little bit less attractive. You see, I've got a lot of green. I think I'd rather just do another pipe because I've got the green and the white. So can I move over here? Um, no, I cannot. I can move Slowpoke and get some more electricity. I don't need that. I can move Wing to come over here and buy or collect some more stuff, but I'm pretty much full, so I need to spend some stuff. Or, well, this one I cannot use because nobody's in those spaces. So it's so... You know what? what the, mm, I don't want to move... I, I don't need electricity, so I think it is Winged One, who, remember, can go counterclockwise as well. Let's not forget that. That's pretty nice. Let's go counterclockwise and buy some more pipe. Bippity boop. Boom. All righty. And this one. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, this is not a good one because it only has a, a small dividend and a speed out. I can't attach that to. In oh, I can. I can. No, I can't because that doesn't work. Drat. Oh, shoot. Or is this? This was here, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. So two green. And a white. Maybe I don't want to buy that one. Although, I mean, it is. You know, I mean, there's a lot of points. Let's see. So, what else could I buy? I don't have any blue. I, I do have two white and yellow. I could do this one. This one can't go anywhere either. So, that's the thing. If I take this, all I'll be able to do is score four points for it. Because I need um, big innies and um, uh, little innies. I need to buy this one. Which I can. Yeah, I'm going to buy that one. For two green. Wait. Oh, no, no. That's the one I can't because the only I could only put it there, but that won't work. Drat. Oh, I put myself in quite the pickle. Maybe I should not come back here and buy pipe right now. Maybe I should go on ahead and just move them forward. And But the toothbrush is not as good anymore. Um. Oh, and the other mitten is gone as well. But remember, they can move four, wasn't it? It was one, two, three, four. But again, I don't have room to collect stuff. So maybe now is not a good time to move Mr. Quickie. But I've got to play one, and I've got to move one. I could just go with the Slowpoke and get some electricity. I'll be able to use it later. That's a possibility. One, two, three, four. Maybe I'll just get some more. I mean, the electricity is used for buying upgrades predominantly and for activating uh, you know, those upgrades. So I guess I just went like that. Okay. 
So that bought me some time. And then it is Jen's turn. And she still can't get her coffee cup. Oh, man. This is terrible. Although, remember, remember now the slowpoke for Jen can move four. So if Jen moves the slowpoke and go one, two, three, four. And so she could buy another pipe. But she doesn't want to buy pipes. She's only going to move three and start drawing cards herself. So, she can take this one, which has three acorns and is worth two points. She's already got this. This is a one-time thing where she can basically convert cubes into other cubes. And again, it's three acorns. She'd like to keep her acorn count down if she can. So, here's this one with only one acorn, which is just another turn. I think Jen will hold on to this. So, anytime she wants, she can immediately take a second turn. So, basically, she's put this turn off. She's moved it. She's banked this turn for later. And that goes into the discard pile. And then she draws a card, and it's still not what she needs to get this into position to get that coffee cup. Oh, it's just sitting right there on the edge. Will Jen get her coffee cup? I don't know, folks. I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of how Transmissions plays. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen, or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.